All right, bear, fire in the hole. Hold on, we got Jack a shell. Yeah, safety. You're good. Take a fine bead. People are striving to find meaning, value, substance, satisfaction inside their life. And they look to social media and see somebody and they're like, man, I want to be like that guy. But really, that's not what, hunting is not what I'm drawing the validation of my life from. My hunting is an extension and a symptom of a life that's built in a certain way over here. And because I've built life that way, I'm able to exert energy into this part of my life and it, and it just really works. Clay Newcomb is probably the most goal-oriented and focus-driven person I've dealt with in this industry. It's like Robert Frost, Aldo Leopold, and Andy Griffith had a baby, and they named it Clay Newcomb. Who are you talking to, pup? Who are you talking to, pup? I always like to pick up her feet every time I do this. When you can pick up an animal's feet, you know that he trusts you. I saw advertised this young mule that was 18 months old and pretty much untouched. He called me. He says, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get a mule. I'm like, why, why would you do that, Clay? I mean, why invite something into your home that you're going to feed and take care of that could kill you? She just caught my eye. I'd never trained a mule before. I'd never thought I could train a mule. I had no reason to think that I could. But when I saw her, I was just like, I'd like to buy that mule and train it. Easy, easy, here we go. Here we go, easy, easy. He's like, no man, this is gonna be epic. I'm gonna be hunting and I'm gonna be shooting off this mule and I'm like, well, I'm there with the camera when this happens, you know, so I, I will can tell Misty what happened to you. An old man once told me that a mule weighed his whole life to kick you and kill you. So just because he's never kicked you before doesn't mean that he's not going to kick you today. He, he just has a way of making stuff happen that you would never dream could, you could pull off. When I first decided to try to shoot a deer off Izzy's back, I called the landowner and I said, hey man, can you keep a secret? To me, that's just a fun goal that I can, that, that just gives me something to shoot for that's a challenge. I think the reason that I enjoy so many different things is that I feel like deep down I'm really a specialist. Hey man, it was in my dad and it's in me. Uh, it's not like what Clay has. Clay gets up early, stays up late, doesn't need a lot of sleep, climbs mountains. You know, he. He's just tough as a boot and, you know, he can run up a mountain. That mountain he hunts, I hunted it for years and, you know, it was a chore. And he doesn't think much about it. He just goes up it, you know. It's just in our DNA, you know, to, to do stuff kind of hard. We got him. We got him hemmed up, buddy. Right there. All right, boys, we're in the chips. There you go. Get him, get him, get him. Woo! He's about to catch him. 
Clay's one of those guys that I would like to been his age because he puts in, he don't put in 100%, he puts in 110%. <laughs> Uh, if you know Clay, you know what I'm talking about. He just absolutely is dedicated on anything he does, whether it's bear hunting, deer hunting, squirrel hunting, coon hunting. Uh, 110%. <laughs> Double battered, fried bear oil squirrel. In 2007, I had a dream that I killed a 24 point buck with my bow. When I woke up in the morning, I reached over and I grabbed a pen and just on the random piece of paper drew the sketch of the rack that I saw in this dream. And I, I marked it, dream of bow kill, July, 20, July 2007 wrote, do not throw away, Misty, because my wife throws stuff away. I stashed it away, and then on October the 18th, 2007, I killed this buck, and he's got 24 points, and that deer is the deer that started my career in the outdoor industry. I had three articles published. You know, he was always a good writer, a, a kind of an artist type guy. You know, he could draw. And, different things and had a lot of creativity. And he would write maybe a few stories for magazines, but that deer, it opened the door to a lot of stuff. It's a really, really special animal that really changed my life. Growing up a whitetail hunter, bear hunting wasn't even on the radar. Like when I was a kid, the thought of killing a bear was just like a pipe dream. Like nobody did it consistently in our region. Little did I know that that, that first morning of Arkansas bear hunting would really change the course of my life. The bear thing grew inside of me. And in 2010, I started the Arkansas Black Bear Association, which at the time was a hunting conservation organization for black bear in Arkansas. That five years later led to me acquiring Bear Hunting Magazine, which is the only print bear hunting magazine in the world. And from that, the, the, the floodgates of opportunity opened for me to really hunt bears all over North America. And that's what I've done extensively the last five years. Hey, bear. are iconic of North American wilderness and it's what they represent deep down deep down really what I want as a hunter is to interact with wild places I thought he was gonna get in this bond with us the passion for for bears and, and bear hunting and that whole culture yeah, he just exudes it <laughs> it's, it's not enough just to go hike there it's not enough to take a picture there I want to I want to interact with it. I want to bring it home. I want to be able to share it with my family. And so when I see a bear hide on the wall, when we cook a bear steak, it's my way of sharing that wildness and being a part of it. My life is is I feel like it's well integrated in that this hunting lifestyle that we live is not something that they are spectators of, but it's something that they actively participate in. He, he does a lot of stuff with his family, He's very family oriented, you know, focused on his kids and his wife. Hey man, it, it's, it's big time. It's God, it's family, but then all this other stuff is secondary. All my kids, the first meat they ever had was deer meat. They were raised on deer meat. And I've always said, told my kids, I don't really care if you grow up to be as passionate a hunter as me. What I do care about is that you grow up and you're a, you're a positive voice for the lifestyle that you grew up in. Good shot, good shot. Yeah! 
I get to the end of my life and I was a great hunter, but I was a poor father and husband and I failed. And so I have to actively work to build that inside of me. The struggle with sometimes even with social media and stuff is that you put this image of yourself out, you know, this image, and you're taking the highlights, the ultimate highlights, and you're putting it out there and people perceive you as that, but really you're something totally different, not in a, not in a deceitful way, but I mean, well, I'm way, spend way more time being a husband and a father and working in my business than I do riding mules and, you know, hunting bears. And if I was totally unbalanced, and this was all I focused on, all this would be screwed up, and this wouldn't work anymore, you know? So to be successful, you've gotta, you've gotta have balance. And I'm a first a husband, then a father, and a hunter.